All right, I'll kick us off today. Thanks everybody and welcome um, to joining today's webinar, um, Winning on Wednesday. And this one is on how to recruit and find great people, especially now when talent is tight. My name is Kristen Biermeyer and I'm the Digital Marketing Specialist at Wagner CPAs and I will be your moderator for today's webinar. During the presentation today, any questions can be submitted through the Q&A feature that's located at the bottom of your screen. We'll try and get to all of your questions either during or after the presentation, but if we don't, our presenter will be sure to follow up with you. This presentation is being recorded and will be emailed to you after today's event. And it will also be available on the Wegner CPA's website under our recorded events section. I'll introduce you to our panelists today. They are Nathan Brinkman. He is the owner and founder at Triumph Wealth Management. Dan Bergs is a senior manager at Wagner CPAs. And our final panelist and presenter is Susan Thompson, and she is a partner and licensed coach at Action Coach. Susan, I'll turn things over to you. Thank you, Kristen, and welcome, everybody. Uh, this is a special series for clients and partners of Wagner CPAs and Triumph Wealth Management and Action Coach, Business and Executive Coaching. Um, our team's collaborative focus is exit planning, helping business leaders who are starting to think about transitioning or transferring your business, whether that's 18 months from now or 18 years from now. Uh, and we're committed to being both an educational and execution resource for you. So thank you for being here. Uh, and hopefully some of your team members are able to participate as well. And thank you for Kristen, uh, who is the one who makes all of this uh, look like it's just working seamlessly in the background, because that's what she does. So uh, many of you are or many businesses now are, are kind of out of pandemic mode and back into growth mode. And so for many, many companies, that means it's time to hire or rehire, get back into hiring mode. And boy, talent's tight right now. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. I'll share four things with you. One is there's a lot of foundational work that needs to be done. So we're gonna talk about getting your own house in order first before you ever start thinking about going and recruiting other folks to join your team. And second, we'll create what's called your unique hiring proposition. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a minute. Then third is a little bit about where to market. This is probably the uh, part where, where we have to think out of the box a little bit differently uh, and a little more creatively. And then fourth is I'll share with you at a very high level, because we've got 21 minutes now left together, a very effective and proven process to recruit top level players, A players uh, to join your team that are actually hungry to work for you, uh, that, that have to work a little bit to actually earn the rights to be, um, be part of your team. And Remember, I'm a coach, so we're always going to start with at least getting your head in the right place. And I may have covered this on an earlier Win, Win Your Wednesday session, but it's one that's going to be particularly appropriate today. These two little words on the screen, I know, are the two strongest words in the adult and in our vocabulary to stop adult learning. Here's what I mean. Um, you're going to hear some things today. And the first thing that's going to go through your head is I already know that I already know that or that won't work at my company or that's too weird or I wouldn't do that process. All those I know kinds of things that shut your brain down, shut you down from learning and shut down the other person who's trying to share something with you, shut them down as well. So you both lose out on an opportunity to learn. So I'm going to encourage you highly if you feel that, oh God, that's not going to work in my company coming up into you to set that aside and keep your mind open and, and be um, open and willing to learn about and try something new. The process that I'll share with you, we use with all of our clients at Action Coach. We probably end up hiring just in Dane County alone. 
oh, 50 to 60 to 100 folks every single year in conjunction with clients. Uh, everything from, from uh, you know, new folks in the door all the way up to company presidents and CEOs. So uh, this is a proven model. It's been out there for at least 30 years. And um, it's pretty cool. If I had known about this in my corporate days, it would have given me years back on my life. So I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty excited about it. So when you feel that I know coming in or that that won't work in my company coming in, this is what I want you to replace that with. Isn't that interesting? Tell me more. Tell me more. Maybe there's something that we can learn from your experience. So number one, getting your own house in order. I pulled some stats. Uh, from the Bureau of Labor Statistics, 26% uh, of employees are with a different company today than they were pre-pandemic. They, I think anecdotally, what we found was a lot of people were happy to have a job, and so they stayed put during the pandemic. Um, uh, but then once it was over, they they were ready to, to go from out of, out of preservation mode and into really, okay, I, I need to focus on my career mode. Um, so 26%, a quarter of the labor force is with a different company than they were a year and a half ago. Another stat from uh, Fast Company uh, is that 66% uh, uh, of employees are wanting to find a new job. And oftentimes, most it's going to be one of two things: either they're bored and don't see a career path with you, or the culture isn't right. It's not the right fit for them, or there's something um, caustic in the culture that that uh, needs to be fixed. And then, just you know, to to bring this really close to home, in Dane County, the unemployment rates at two at three point two percent. So everyone who wants a job at this point is working. And many of those folks that are not working are taking advantage of the unemployment benefits that I think run through August. So it's it's a tough time. It's a it's a tough time to be looking for uh, for new folks locally here. So here's the getting your house in order piece. This is the question you need to answer. Out of all of those companies that do what your company does, this is the question you need to answer. Why would I want to work for yours? Why your title company and not one of the five other title companies? Why your bank and not one of the hundred other banks? Why would I want to work for you and not somebody else? And, you know, at some level, because we tend to default to the money, your pay scales need to be fair and they need to be market rate. But once they're fair in market rate, now all things being equal, you still have 90 competitors out of 100 from, from a company standpoint. So this is what applicants are looking for that you need to be able to answer. What does your culture look like? What does normal look like? What does it sound like, feel like? How do you want people to feel and how do people feel when they walk into the doors of your company, whether that's literally through the doors or whether that's figuratively, if you're still in some version of work at home or a hybrid work at home or hotel space or, or whatever. So when you when they are interacting with your company, what, what is it like? What is it like? What does it feel like? And then what are your rules of the game? This is the culture part. And your rules of the game can be um, aspirational, but they should be something that you and your team believe in fiercely and really work hard each day to, to live. And then what does your company stand for? You know, one of the things that our, our millennial and, and uh, Gen Z friends have really taught us is that, you know, we want to, they want something more than a paycheck. They want your company to stand for something bigger. So what is that something bigger for you? What's that whole picture of culture come into play? Here's one of the things to remember as a business owner, your culture is one of the most important things that you get to choose. And when you choose it, people will choose to join that culture. 
if you don't choose a culture, a culture is going to find its own way in the door and it, and it more than likely won't look like what you wish it looked like. So take that time to really be intentional about your culture. And that's what you want to share with people. And then where are you heading? They want to know that your business is growing, right? People want to work for winners. They want to be on winning teams. So what is the next five years look like for your company? What do the next one year look like? What does what do three years look like? Where do you, it's okay to say, you know, we're not quite sure, but this is our intention. This is what we're working toward. Why? Why are you working towards that? Why, why, what's important to you about your vision and why you're heading there? I know for me, um, I, I, my, mine is twofold. One is that when I was um, running my last company as a CEO, I made it a lot harder on myself than I needed to because I didn't have the right recipe, right? I didn't have the right kind of help and the right kind of resources um, at my disposal. So I made it a lot harder on myself than I needed to be. And I want other CEOs and owners and business leaders to know that there's help out there. We're not right for everybody, but we are certainly going to be right for those people that want to align themselves with high performing help. And the other part was that I grew up in a very scarcity minded um, environment, corporate environment for me to do well, somebody else was going to get passed by. And it bred all kinds of bad behaviors and politics. And it's very important to me to know, to, to, to let people know and show them how to be a great person and run a great company too right? You don't need to be a jerk to be successful. That's so that's, you know, when you get to your why and you're explaining your why as the head of the company, people need to understand what is it? What is it for you that makes this so special and important? And is that those are those things important to me as well? And then what kind of a career path can you offer? Nine times out of 10, when, when we see people leave companies, it's because they feel stuck. They can't get any farther than where they've, where they've um, already gotten. So what does a career path look like? If you continue to grow as a company, that's fantastic because that opens up all kinds of career possibilities for your people as they grow and gain some longevity with your company. All right, unique hire proposition. If you have ever heard of a unique selling proposition, um, the unique hiring proposition is the same thing. Oftentimes, um, you have an open position and you go and put it out on Indeed or on LinkedIn or on Monster. And um, sorry, my phone was ringing there. And um, it, it looks kind of like this, wanted administrative assistant, eight to five, this many years of experience, Microsoft Office proficiency required, blah, 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 right? It sounds like somebody took a job description and stuck it out on the internet and then hoped that it was going to draw people to you. Your unique hiring proposition, just like your unique selling proposition, is how you market your company to potential employees. How do you set yourself apart from the sea of a hundred other banks? Okay, how do you set yourself apart? And I want to give you an ex I want to give you an example of this one. Uh, Broadwing Advisors, Craig uh, Stanley, and Deanna Porter and Steph. Um, uh, started at, they were a startup, I think seven or eight years ago at this point, and we're winning, this is actually a, a, a global award that they won for culture. Um, and these are the things that they say about themselves when they're talking about hi hiring people, when they're talking about their company. For, first and foremost, we're just not another commercial real estate firm. We're not just another tenant rep, you know, uh, tenant rep or, or asset management kind of company. We believe that your business drives your real estate. Everything comes back to your business and 
it stops and starts there. Once we understand your business and where your business is heading and how quickly you're growing, or if you're going to make an acquisition, or if you're going to shed employees, then we can talk about real estate and how real estate all fits into that. The second is, these are from their points of culture, their rules of the game. Self-improvement is important to them because we grow by challenging them ourselves. Um, another point of culture for them is fun. Rosé Fridays, they have Rosé Fridays every Friday. Every Friday afternoon in the Broadway offices at about three in the afternoon, you can see the team sitting around in the conference room just enjoying a great bottle of wine together. Sound like you? Join us. Just look at the difference between those two ways to present yourself in the marketplace, okay? One is very dry, very typical. One is gonna say, you're either gonna read some of this stuff that you see on Broadwing and say, oh my gosh, that sounds like a fantastic place to work. I wanna be a part of it. Or you're gonna see that and go, I just want to dry and boring, man. I just want to go do my job. This is a little, these people are a little too much for me. And what we want when you are, are presenting and marketing yourself in the marketplace is exactly that, that you, that somebody reads your, your ad and either says, that's me or not so much. Because what you want is that people who say not so much don't even bother to apply. And then where to look. Now I've got some of the usual ones here on top. Uh, LinkedIn, Indeed, um, those, yes, get the job ads out there. They do a nice job of, of um, getting those ads out into the market marketplace. You can make those geographic dependent. Uh, you can make them keyword dependent. So that's fairly easy to take those uh, kinds of, um, uh, uh, platforms and, and really tar highly target who you're looking for. And then let's start to be a little creative here. How about your customer database? Your customers know you and love you. Who do they know that they would love to be a member of your team? So advertise to them. Employee incentives will give you an extra three days of vacation for every person that you recommend join our company that joins our company, whatever that, whatever kind of an incentive, it might be a, mo a money incentive, whatever kind of incentive might be a good incentive for them. But if you've got good culture and you're running your company well, and they see a good career path, they're going to want their friends and the people they care about to join you too. Chambers, professional organizations, uh, all of these have generally free ability to post job openings and professional associations are important because they're often overlooked. Uh, these are the folks that, that are highly, highly targeted. They already do what, what, uh, what you need them to do. Uh, your church, your little league, these get into personal networks. Again, if, you're, if your culture is good and people see you as a reflection of that, they're going to naturally be thinking, gosh, you know, I'd like to learn more about that company. And maybe there's a spot here for me or, or a friend or a colleague or a child or whatever. Um, one, one place that, that we use often our professionals, our professional uh, professions, where there's a high level of burnout and fatigue in the profession itself, but those folks have transferable skills. And I'll give you a quick example. There are a lot of teachers out there who just happen to do trim carpentry or woodwork on the side. They do it as a hobby. And then all of a sudden, you know what? Teaching was tough to start with. And then we went through a year of COVID and we're not sure what's going to hear after here. I might be ready for a new career. And I just happen to have a really nice skill over here in carpentry that might be good for your general contractor, for example. And then outside of Dane County, there are counties and there are states where the unemployment is quite high. And if you're willing to relocate people into the area, uh, that's a prime, prime source of, of uh, potential job candidates. One of, the, um, one, of, one of the things that really struck me 
when, when we hire today, and I'm going back 20 years here, is that anybody who has any affiliation with the University of Wisconsin, whether they went to school here or grew up here, when they start having kids, they want to be back in these Wisconsin school systems. So just use that affiliation with the UW and people wanting to get back to the area to your advantage. All right, next. Whoops. Here is a traditional process, right? Or at least this is how this is how I the world I kind of grew up in. So I would call a recruiter, I'd spend an hour on the phone with the recruiter and tell them all about our culture and what we're trying to do and how we're growing and about this position and what kind of person I wanted. So they'd get a really good picture. And then they would write the ad and they would start to get um, resumes in. And so say, you know, say it's for a salesperson, right? And they'd start to get the resumes in and they'd get 30 or 40 resumes in and they would phone screen the applicants and then they would send me uh, 10 to 12 people, 10 to 12 resumes to take a look at. And I'd blow a weekend reading through 10 to 12 resumes and I would phone screen maybe four or five of them. And by phone screen number three, probably my enthusiasm for the process is about done, right? So instead of really selling my company, right? And putting a good foot forward for the company, I'm saying things like, I'm sure the recruiters told you all about us. Tell me about you. Well, that's not fair to an applicant, right? And it doesn't put the company in a good light at all, right? And then you bring in a couple for a face-to-face -face interview and then do some background and reference checks and then present an offer and then hope and pray and pray and pray that somebody actually um, um, says yes. And then once they say yes, hope and pray and pray again that they can actually do all the things that they could tell you to do in the, in the interview process, right? This whole thing takes two and a half to five months. And I don't know about you guys, but I used to keep people that I shouldn't have kept for way too long because I dreaded the process. I was like, you know, it's going to be three to six months and maybe I'll get a good person out of it, but I just don't have the time or the energy to do this. Okay. There's a better way. <laughs> so this is where that I know, right? You need to set that I know to the side. We're going to start in a little different spot. For starters, we're going to recruit like a marketer would market your product. So that recruitment ad doesn't look like um, administrative assistant, eight to five, full benefits. Microsoft Office required. Okay, it doesn't look anything like that. It actually markets your company. Like it says, hey, do you want to join a team of really fun, loving, um, fast paced uh, folks who are growing and making a real difference in the marketplace? Then read on. We are a company that does X, Y, and Z. These are the things that are important to us. This is the position we have open today. And here are three or four things, not 12, three or four things that you need to know about that position or you need, you know, you need skills that you need to have. And then the requisite, here's the pay range, benefits that you offer if you offer benefits. And if, if this is you, please click here to apply right now. So again, we're really looking for people who aren't a perfect match to never apply, okay? This is a self-opting out process, self-deselection process. And then once those, heard, once those resumes start coming in, uh, then we start doing some things so that people deselect themselves at each step in the process. We start putting hurdles in front of them to jump. And a hurdle can be something as simple as call this phone number and answer some pre-recorded questions. Okay. 
50% of the people are never going to jump that hurdle. And that's the point. Because if they're not willing to do something that's a little out of the ordinary and a little uncomfortable when they're interviewing with you, they're not going to do it when they're on your payroll. So part of what we're doing is seeing whether they'll just, do they jump the hurdles or do they not jump the hurdles? So that's a self, that's a deselection, a self deselection process. Um, then we have uh, a group interview for those people that jump your hurdles, which is another, again, high pressure, very different. Most people aren't used to it. A uh, process, but it lets you see how they interact with you and your team and with each other. And you see how they act under pressure. And you'd be surprised at the behaviors that come out when people are under pressure. Um, some of them are just sit there with a scowl on their face. Some of them will only talk to the person who's doing the interview. Some of them really are empathetic with the other folks around the table. And you can tell that that's telling you something about how they behave in a team. So it's, it's a very intentional, very high pressure environment. And it's actually a lot of fun for those people who choose to make it fun. But the point is, do they jump that hurdle or do they say this is beneath me or this is too weird or can't we just have coffee? Um, are they going to play by your rules or not? This is your chance to find out. Once we come through that, that uh, group interview, then we give them a psych psychometric profile like a DISC or a Myers-Briggs or a Profiles XT, one of those, so we can make sure that what you want them to do from a job standpoint matches how they're wired. We always want to set people up to succeed. So I don't want to put someone who's wired for people, right, like me, uh, into a job where they're going to be in a cubicle with their head down behind a computer all day because I might be able to do the work, but I'm going to be miserable. So we really want to use those psychometric profiles to set people up to succeed for you. And then for those people that make it through all that stuff, we have some traditional face-to-face -face interviews. Um, again, a very special format for those. Uh, then you make your offer. It's more of a collaborative offer. What are they looking for? What can you offer? And then welcome them well to your company. So not the uh, first day lunch and then you're off trying to figure out uh, what you're supposed to be doing for the rest of the day, but really let's have, a, have you have a, a strong, solid onboarding for the first week to two weeks so that people feel well cared for and they feel like they know what they're doing. They're not walking in, in blind. This process, start to finish, takes three to five weeks. So as a, from, rather than three to five months, this is three to five weeks. If not enough candidates come in um, for you to be really excited about who jumps all of your hurdles, then we just run the process again because it doesn't take, doesn't take long. So very, very efficient from this standpoint. And, you know, Brad Sugars is the founder of Action Coach. And this is one thing that his dad said to him that he says to us all the time, you get the employees you deserve. So if you're finding that it's hard to recruit people or that the people that you have aren't doing what you need them to do, the place to start is with you. Okay. We need to build you up as a stronger leader so that you've, you've got that horsepower to bring those people onto your team. And the next is the biggest risk you can take is to do nothing. Okay, this was interesting. You could shelve this away and say, there's no way. But you know what? If what you're doing isn't working, you need to try something else. So this might just be the something else. Questions. We can open this back up. If you have questions, uh, here's my contact information. Susan Thompson at actioncoach.com. There's no P in Thompson. Uh, and my direct phone line and the website. And then actually before Kristen comes back in, I just want to um, note that the next uh, winning on Wednesday is July 21st. And Nathan Brinkman from Triumph Wealth Management will be talking about ESOPs. So if you've ever had questions about ESOPs or is this the right thing 
for your company or pros and cons around ESOPs, Nathan's going to be covering that at noon from 12 to 1230 on the 21st. And then again, there's my contact information as well as Dan's and uh, Nathan's at the end. Please reach out to us at any time. And thank you. And thank you, Kristen, for uh, pulling this all together. You're welcome. And thank you, Susan, for that excellent presentation and sharing all of your wonderful expertise. Um, I certainly enjoyed it. So keep an eye out for an email from me coming to you after this session, either later today or tomorrow. It will include a link to the recorded session from today, as well as a link to register for um, Nathan's um, session coming up next. So um, Susan, if you have time, I see that we did just get a question come into chat here. Sure. Um, and it is, what are the best psychometrics you would recommend? Um, it, there's an, it depends. There are literally about 2,500 different versions of psychometric profiles, okay? They're all fundamentally telling you the same thing. They're telling you about people's pace. Are they faster paced or more methodically paced? And then they're telling you whether they get their energy from people or from tasks. So I like DISC personally because it's simple and it's easy to teach people how to use it, easy to put it into practice and read people very quickly using DISC. Um, but there are certainly others um, like AccuMatch starts to, to dive a little deeper. There's a wealth profile, especially if you're working with senior level folks or salespeople. That's a really good one. Um, it's, it's just a, a matter of, I, I, my personal preference is DISC as a starting point. Great, thank you. And that's, um, that's all I've got for questions. So we'll close things out here and feel free to reach out to Susan if you have anything further and we hope to see everybody back again on the 21st. Great, thanks everybody. Thank you, Kristen. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.